All right, hey guys. Um, yeah, tonight we are going to be doing a little book review. Um, so I hope you guys are uh, caught up on Don Quixote. Let's talk about the boundary waters. And let's talk about the footwear. Tonight's a footwear night. Um, I'm going to talk about footwear that um, has worked for me over the years. I'm going to talk about my clear cut winners. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about footwear that I have not worn, that other guys have worn, and you know I've uh, just noticed you know what's what's worked well or not. Um, but let's work. Let's talk first off. You know, let's work backwards. Let's just knock out our camp shoes. So first off, camp shoes. Um, for years, I mean lots of years, my my camp shoe, once we arrived there, um, so we got a canoe shoe, right, a board shoe, and we got a camp shoe. The camp shoe, I, for years, I've always had something that's like open air, you know, after being wet all day, my feet being wet all day from portaging in the water, I wanted something that would let my feet breathe. And that was my logic. But here's the thing is my feet can breathe perfectly well if I just walk around barefoot. And that time of year can be a little bit chillier. And you couple that with the fact that you get a lot of precipitation that time of year. Um, you know, I'm just at the point now where I'm going to be bringing, um, uh, a, well, it's, it's their own version of Gore-Tex, right? But uh, these are oboes and I'm not plugging them. They're great boots, but a lot of great boots out there. Uh, these are going to be my camp shoes. I'm bringing these up this year. So um, it's Oboe's version of Gore-Tex. Uh, I don't like hiking boots. I, I don't like ankle boots. I'm more into hiking shoes now. I backpack in them. Um, I'm sure there's exceptions, but that's where I'm at. Uh, so these are going to be my uh, shoes. I can't. Um, so I have forgone the key for camp. Now, uh... Yeah, let's, let's we got the Keen right here. Okay, the Keen, or something similar to it, but I, I really, I think Keen, in this kind of a, a piece of footwear, Keen, Keen actually kind of excels with the, uh, and when we're talking about, um, if you were to get, if you were to go uh, canoeing, and you're trying you know, to save every single ounce, right? Maybe you're soloing, or I don't know what you're doing on you know, a 40 day trip or something like that. Let's say that you were looking at only bringing one shoe. That's where the Keen is going to excel, right? You've got the, the rubber toe box, um, the essential, essentially a Vibram sole, right? Like that is tough rubber. Um, you got this back here, right? So that, that and if you've worn a Keen, you know, they stay on, right? You can tighten them up, loosen them up pretty easy. Uh, it's, it's leather or it's some kind of webbing, right? Um, this, this is, this is meant to be, get beat on. The only real negative that I would say for Keen, and this is, this is actually only when the mosquitoes are getting really bad, is they can bite you through here, okay? That's, quite frankly, the only negative, uh, that I would say about the Keen itself. Um, oh, obviously, yeah, if it's raining at camp, if it's cold... I mean, at the same time, you could you could bring wool socks up there, and wet wool will still stay warm. So, I mean, that's you solved that right there. Um, great, great piece of footwear. I got these for ten bucks on eBay years back, and like, they come in handy so often. Like, Keen is uh, just such a great piece. This is not coming on my trip this year because our trip, I'm gonna bring two pairs of shoe, uh, two pairs of shoes up there. So I'll get to that. Um, so cover the camp shoes, cover the Keens. Great, you know, if I'm going to bring one shoe, the Keens are them. Uh, next, I'm going to go to... Now, we're going to save what I'm going to call my, my most highly recommended for last. So, the next shoe is the shoe that I bring up there as my second pair. Okay? Uh, this, is, this is made by Chaco. They make tough shoes. Uh, real solid webbing here, right? Uh, these are meant to be water shoes. They drain. They drain pretty well. Um, but as much as they're meant to be water shoes, if you guys look at this, like the design and the bottom of these things, these are hiking shoes. Like these are great portable shoes. I've worn these for a few years now, and I just, I really like these shoes. Um, they do stay wet the entire trip. Okay, so they drain well. They don't let the bugs bite you. 
Um, but, well, I, I take that back in certain spots. That is the biggest probably negative of this shoe. I forgot about that. Is they can bite you right here. Now, we got, again, we go in May, so that's not really that much of a factor. Um, but but that, is, that is something that I would say there's room for improvement on the shoe uh, when it comes to that. Next thing, and this is only comparing this shoe to some other shoes that I've seen, other uh, water shoes that I've seen out there, is in terms of drainage, sure, you know, it'll, it'll drain eventually, but I don't like, like, it's kind of almost like this gray wall here, if you can see that behind the webbing. That, I mean, I kind of get why it's there, you know, but it, um, I also think like it could help drain a lot better if the water could just run out straight there. And also a lot of water shoes have like holes in the bottom now to, again, help with the drainage. These don't have that. Um, again, I'm gonna fall back on guys. These things, I think, I was looking at different water shoe options. These got high marks, they deserve high marks, and I got them for a pretty good price. Okay, that matters. Okay, last thing, and I'm gonna say that these are my clear cut winners, and there are videos out there, there are guys out there who have, uh, have a very different opinion. They think that this kind of shoe should only be used for the intended activity, and that you should go out and get something like an NRS. And I love NRS, don't hear me wrong. There's a guy plugging, and he didn't even work for NRS. He wasn't even endorsed, but he was plugging these, I don't know if it was like a stand-up paddleboard or kayak or something fishing, and he was talking about how those shoes, specific uh, kayaking shoes, offered better balance because the base of the shoe like, had a shape like this, so it helped your foot balance better. And I swear, it just I had this flashback. I was at this triathlon a bunch of years back, and my dad's friend, you know, he, he used to do triathletes. So we're watching these guys, and we see this, this guy come in, like, walks by, okay? Old guy. And he's got this, I don't know, $15,000 speed bike. The guy was a big guy. And my dad's, my dad's friend, Mike, he's like, I just don't get it. <laughs> this guy goes out and spends 15, you know, 10, 15 grand on this bike so that he can shed you know, six inches off the, or six ounces off the bike or pound off the bike. Could just go work it off. <laughs> but when I think about, when I think about getting these specialized shoes to help with the balance, I'm like, first off, man, like, you know, I'm, I'm not seeing you as a very, like, yeah, I'm not seeing you as a yoga guy, but um, if you were to actually work on your own balance, um, here's where I'm gonna say, an old pair of running shoes is the clear coat winner. And here's why. And I, I'm gonna put both these up. Uh, different kinds of running shoes. These are minimalist, rubber, you know, hard rubber on the bottom. These are your regular road shoes. Um, road shoes, 300 miles, and for most people, then they, they go in the use category, right? And then you should get a new pair for your actual running. Uh, that said, they still have a lot of use, right? You're painting around the house, you're, you're working in the backyard, you need a kind of, uh, you're, you need to go portage. Um, these are a clear cut winner for me, and here's why: a, they're 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 free, right? Like it's not a specialized piece of gear that you have to buy. Uh, number two, you know, shoes are probably one of the most like when you look at the uh, landfills, shoes are one of those things that the amount of shoes, you know, old shoes that are in, in landfills. Is just so huge. Okay, and this is not a tree hugging thing, okay, guys, but that's serious. Like, why? Like, the more, if squeeze out every last use, like real use, and this is real use of things that you can, running shoes fall into that category if you're going to canoe country. Okay, number three, these are meant to have impact. Now, <laughs> caveat, uh, Read the book, Born to Run. It will explain why shoes are arguably one of the most dangerous inventions to man. Okay, I've read that myself. So if, if you guys are um, uh, familiar with that and have been shaking your head at me, uh, I get what you're saying, okay? And I get I get that part about it. Uh, that said, you know, if you're walking, if you're portaging, like these do offer, you know, 
padding. Um, number four. I saw some guys like, oh yeah, you know, running shoes should only be used for running. Like, if you're on a boat, like, you need special boat shoes. It's like, okay, uh, I have my hobbies where if that were the case, like, I would have a hundred different pairs of shoes and that's not going to happen. When it comes to, um, <laughs> one of the things he said was that uh, running shoes, they don't dry. <laughs> I just started laughing. I'm like, yeah, I don't even know. I'm lately, I'm like, uh, I don't even know if you've ever run a mile in your life. So, yeah, um, these are made. <laughs> these are made to be sweat in. Like, some people actually run like 26 miles in them. Um, no, these dry beautifully. Like, everything about this is a great ported shoe. Or it is a really good ported shoe. Is it perfect? No. Um, but for, for value wise, this is the clear winner in terms of value. Um, you'll be happy, you, you know, you, you'll be able to allocate, like if you have X amount of money that you're putting towards the trip um, and you want to have a good trip, like going out and buying like ported shoes or even something, if you have an old pair of running shoes and you go out and you don't know how many trips, if you're going to do this next time or the year after, if you go out and try and find something that's even remotely close to like specialized and you spend an extra, I don't know, 30, 50 bucks on them, I'm sorry, you made a mistake. Uh, put that towards your good uh, rain jacket or a really good headlamp or, you know, there's a lot of other items that I would put towards that money towards first. Um, and I would go with the, the used running shoes. Um, might not be perfect. Yeah, we're at 12 minutes. I was going to talk about Crocs. I've never worn them. Um, I think if you're doing a casual trip and the portages, um, let's just say they're all sand beaches, that's a great shoe if you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, if you don't know what you're getting yourself into, if, if, you know, if we're talking about rocky, if it's a rocky site, if it's sketchy portages uh you know i'm not sure if i would have a croc up there but again i've never even had a croc on my foot so i'm, I'm not going to really comment on that um hey guys i i uh, i look forward to comments below see what you guys think i know like i said i know there's there's some elite like professional stuff I, this is semi macho this is the uh, perspective we're coming at so we do these trips once or twice a year uh, not looking to break the bank, um, you know, looking for something that makes sense. That's what we're doing here is making making sense of some stuff. So tell me what you guys got. I'm curious. All right. All right, guys. Catch you later.